Hello everyone, welcome back to the Glidebait modeling series. So we went through the gill cover design in the last chapter, which was jam-packed with some new techniques that I have not used before. So if you missed it, remember to check it out. Before we go into today's topic, I would like to uh, revisit the branchial stego rays area a little bit. Uh, because I was not super happy about how they are just some pipes cut into the gill cover. Instead, I want to create this uh, kind of layered look. My thought process was I was just going to use half of the pipe form to make the cut. So one side of the cut will be sharper with the edge and the other side of the cut will be smoother. So first I undo the merge and take them out from the body. Once those pipe forms are separated, you can kind of see them line up almost on the same plane. So instead of cutting them one by one, uh, I will project those lines that I used to create the branchial steagle rays, those blue ones, and project them to a common plane. To create the plane, I pick three points from those blue lines. Once the lines are projected, uh, you can see those purple ones, then I will be able to use those projected lines to cut the pipe forms. Here I'm just showing the half of the pipe forms that I'm going to use as a tool to cut the branchial steagle rays. And here you can see the combined result and one side is sharp and the other side is kind of smooth, but it's not enough. So I went ahead and added a fillet on the left side. And here's the result. Now let's get to today's topic, eyes and mouth. Here is a collection of the rainbow trout pictures that I found from the internet. And as you can see, they all kind of have an eye socket. And the eyeball just hanging inside the socket. So I will try to capture that. To create the eye socket, I've tried many different approaches. And this is the most efficient way that I've found. So basically, I'm using the quabble. First, I sculpt the quabble to the rough shape. Then I move to the surface just to have a little bit of intersect. Once I'm happy with the shape, I then combine this cutting tool with the body using the cut operation. And then I use the fillet to smooth out the uh, combined edge. Next is the eyeball. Similar to eye socket, I also use a quabble because quabble can give me more control over the sphere. And I use the similar approach, create the quabble first and sculpt a little bit, not too much, and then move to the appropriate place. I plan to use 3D eyes in a final glide bait build, so I'm gonna cut out the top of the eyeball and prepare for that. So split body, select the body to split 
and then split tool. Now fix the names. For the mouth, nothing special, just draw the outline and extrude. And here I'm gonna make the mouth open wider a little bit uh, because I also need to take the hardware into account. Now close the profile so we can extrude with it. Adjust. Now create this bony structure on the side of the mouth. Now extrude this profile. So theoretically I want to extrude the surface but as you can see that doesn't work because the extrude area contains multiple faces and I can only choose one here. So the workaround is first I extrude all the way and next I will combine this piece with the main body using intersect. I also added the nostrils by cutting out a small crop ball from the nose area. And that concludes the head design for this truck glide bait. So in this chapter, I didn't introduce fancy techniques, uh, just some hard work of sculpting, adjusting, and setting the right radius for the fillet. Hope this series has been helpful on your lure design or just 3D modeling in general. I think this glide bait is starting to take shape. In the next chapter, we will work on the fins. So please follow along, subscribe and turn on notifications if you are interested. I will see you in the next chapter. Happy modeling!